In our headlines on this Monday afternoon, August 7th, here in South Korea. The 25th World Scout Jamboree stays on track as initially scheduled until this Saturday with a host of additional cultural experiences beyond Semangam to better weather, daytime record heat. Meanwhile, Korea's core inflation rate posts its highest on year rise during the seven-month period from January to July this year since the 1998 Asian financial crisis at 4.5% amid greater dining bills and greater raw material costs. And Capitals Hall is selected to host the World Youth Day in the year 2027, which will mark the first time in three decades for the Catholic Church event to be held in Asia. Additional attention has been directed towards hygiene and safety amid the record heat wave here as the 25th World Scout Jamboree stays on track as scheduled until this Saturday with steady support from the central government as well as the corporate arena. Our Shin Sebyok has details. South Korea will continue with the World Scout Jamboree until August 12th as planned. That is according to Prime Minister Han Dok Su on Saturday. After holding a meeting, we have decided to continue with the Jamboree. A growing number of participants at this year's Jamboree have been suffering heat-related illnesses due to exposure to extreme heat since it began last Tuesday. The campsite, located on reclaimed land at Semangum in Tolabukdo province, lacks natural shade. But there has also been criticism over hospital bed shortages, waterlogged conditions and bad food. With the decision, the South Korean government vowed to go all out to ensure the smooth running of the Jember event. The measures include additional medical staff, air-conditioned buses and cold water. 60 medical personnel, 64 canopies and 104 air-conditioned buses have also been installed. On top of that, over 930 additional service personnel have been deployed to keep the campsite hygienic. In total, over 330 air-conditioned buses are available and 1,400 service personnel are working at the site. Multiple South Korean companies are also sending supplies. Samsung affiliates are sending mobile toilets, power generators, medical staff and more. LG affiliates decided to send a total of 200,000 drinks. Other conglomerates, Hyundai, GS and Emart, are offering bread, water and maintenance personnel. Also, private organizations such as the Korea International Trade Association and the Korea Chamber of Commerce and Industry have decided to send cooling supplies. And the South Korean government said that because of these efforts, things have improved. Since the decision to fully support the 2023 World Scout Jamboree, the campsite has been gradually stabilizing. The director of the World Organization of the Scout Movement, Jacob Murray, also said there had been, quote-unquote, increased improvement in conditions after additional resources were made available. From now until the end of the Jamboree, South Korea will continue to operate a temporary task force to address the issues raised during the event. Shin Sebyok, Arirang News. And cities across the country are becoming cultural grounds for scouts for the 25th Jamboree here in Korea, with many offering the teenagers the chance to partake in regional activities. Our Lee kyung explains. From Taemangam Jamboree to Korea Jamboree, the World Scout Gathering will be expanded beyond the main campsite of Taemangam with a variety of cultural programs to be added across the nation. The central and local governments have stepped in to come up with the programs after President Yu, while on his vacation, addressed the extreme heat and management issues seen as Hemangum, calling for tourist programs to be provided to, quote, show scouts Korea's industry, culture, history and nature. The president ordered to make sure scouts from the UK and US who are staying in Seoul and Pyeongtaek continue on with their programs there. Also, 17 cities and provinces have proposed 90 cultural programs for scouts who are staying in Semangum to make trips to different regions. Among the programs, sightseeing in Busan, the candidate city of 2030 World Expo, including the famous Heunde Beach. 
the iconic mud festival in Poryong, a science tour at the country's tech capital, Taejeon, including an astronomical observatory and National Science Museum. And at the historic city of Gyeongju, a Confucian Academy and UNESCO heritage sites, including Purguksa Temple. Seoul is also offering sightseeing and arts and performance festival and a water park in downtown Gwangamun. For the usual programs, scouts need to come back to their tents in Seimangam at 5 p.m. in principle. But because some locations are far, we've also prepared places for them to stay elsewhere for two or three day schedules. The much-anticipated K-pop concert will also be held despite a delay over heat-related safety concerns. If the concert was to go as planned on the 6th, scouts would have been exposed to extreme heat for over five days, with things to even heat up for two hours. We concluded that it was inevitable that we had to change the location and date. The concert would take place on the last camping day on August 11th at Tanju World Cup Stadium, which can house an audience of up to over 40,000 with its roof providing shade. Lee kyung Arirang News. And President Yoon suk yeol has reiterated the importance of food hygiene at the Jamboree amid the heat wave nationwide. Remarks to the send were relayed by Presidential Office spokesperson Lee Do-un this past Sunday who added that the president had underscored the need for efforts to ensure prevention against food poisoning. He also voiced the president's words of appreciation to companies and citizens for their contributions to easing the plight of Jamboree participants. Meanwhile, in response to calls for those in charge to be held accountable for their lack of preparation, the top office placed priority on successfully hosting the global scouting event until its end this Saturday, before seeking to question all those responsible for the various challenges encountered. Meanwhile, the teams that pulled out of the camping site in Semangam, notably the British scouts who are currently here in Seoul, spent some quality time touring around the capital city this past weekend. Our Shin Hyong has a look. Contingents from the U.S., Britain and Singapore, who decided to leave the World Scout Jamboree campsite, all left for their new accommodations over the weekend. The group from the U.S., consisting of around 1,500 members, left Semangam on Sunday and moved to Camp Humphreys, an American military garrison in Pyeongtaek of Gyeonggi-do province, citing ongoing extreme weather and conditions at the site. The 4,400 British scout members, the largest contingent of all the participating countries, began departing from the site on Saturday, with their remaining members set to leave on Monday. They will stay in Seoul until the end of the Jamboree, which will run until Saturday. During their remaining time in South Korea, they will experience a variety of cultural activities, including a tour program honoring British veterans of the Korean War. Part of the group took city tour buses and enjoyed the night view in Seoul on Sunday. We've been to see temples, we've been to see palaces, we've uh, been experiencing the street food culture. There's so many different cultural experiences that are so different to our own back in the UK. So we're really, really enjoying being here. Meanwhile, almost 90 percent of the participating countries have decided to continue with the Jamboree at Semangum. European countries, including Belgium, which had considered an early departure, as well as Germany and Sweden, have decided to stay at the campsite, citing significant improvements in food and hygiene. Some delegations from countries like the Philippines, Saudi Arabia and Argentina held a press conference to announce that they will remain until the end of the event. We are seeing around the site some improvements. Um, we are we had the, the word of the leadership of the government that things will be improved. The remaining scouts have been traveling around 14 cities and counties in Cholabukdo province, enjoying various activities such as archery and search and rescue missions. For us, it was a very beautiful day today. We had a lot of tips how can we rescue in case of uh, water um, emergencies as well as indoor emergencies like fire, earthquakes and all these things. The event has now reached a halfway point and efforts have been made to ensure the remainder of the event is a success. Shin Ayong, Arirang News.
Korea's core inflation rate posted its highest on-year rise during January to July this year since the 1998 Asian financial crisis. Now, according to Statistics Korea on this Monday, the rate which excludes food and energy prices rose 4.5 percent on-year during the first seven months of 2023. Officials are linking the surge to greater expenses of dining out, as well as greater costs of raw materials amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Korea's overall industrial production recorded an on-year growth of 1.1% in June amid an expansion in export volume of semiconductors. According to the Korea Development Institute also on this Monday, the chip export volume saw an on-year rise of 21.6%, coupled with a smaller retreat in production. The institute also noted that service production surged yet again by 3.5% in June on-year. Regardless of these findings, though, the Institute warns of rising commodity prices and of China's slow rebound as hindering the Korean economy. Neighboring Japan may begin its discharge of Fukushima radioactive wastewater into the Pacific Ocean later this month. Now, this is according to a report on this Monday by Japan's Asai Shimbun, citing government sources who reportedly claim the discharge will begin after Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida meets with President Yoon suk yeol and U.S. President Joe Biden at the U.S. presidential retreat of Camp David later next week. The newspaper also said Japan plans to launch the process before the start of the bottom trawling fishing season in waters off Fukushima come September. In other news, Capital Seoul has been selected to host the next Catholic Youth Festival in the year 2027. Our Yi Sing Jae has more on the significance of this selection. At the closing mass for the 2023 World Youth Day in Lisbon, Portugal, Pope Francis announced the host city for the next World Youth Day. The next World Youth Day will take place in Asia. It will be in South Korea, in Seoul. In Seoul. The World Youth Day brings together young people from around the world in celebration of their Catholic faith. The massive event runs for five or six days, with the reigning pope also in attendance. Seoul will become the first Asian city to host the event since Manila in 1995, where over five million people attended the event's closing mass. Seoul's archdiocese estimates that around 700,000 to a million Catholics will be in attendance for the Seoul World Youth Day, with 300,000 traveling to South Korea. Since in the past three years we have undergone a COVID situation in Korea, sadly the number of people going to church in Korea has declined. And we sincerely hope that throughout preparations and also during World Youth Day, it will be a great opportunity to develop and mature our youth ministry. So that's what I'm hoping for as our journey begins for the preparation for World Youth Day. The announcement comes as Cardinal Andrew Young Soo Jung and Archbishop Peter Jung Soon Tech of the Seoul Archdiocese traveled to Lisbon last Monday to make a pitch for Seoul. Cardinal Lazaro Yu Hung Sik, Prefect of the Congregation for the Clergy of the Holy See, and Oh Hyun Ju, the South Korean Ambassador to the Holy See, also took part in the pitch. The event is also expected to provide a massive boost to the local economy. The Lisbon World Youth Day is expected to have been worth about 622 million U.S. dollars. Lee Seung Jae, Arirang News. Meanwhile, over in Austria, Korea's Yoon Han Gyal won the 2023 Herbert von Karajan Young Conductors Award this past Sunday. Now, Yoon is the first Korean to have garnered this honor, rising above competitors from Belarus and Austria. He wins a cash prize of 16,500 US dollars and also the opportunity to conduct a concert with the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra and a rising young soloist as part of the 2024 Salzburg Festival. The Herbert von Karajan Award is considered a launch pad for a conductor's broader international career. Air Force training continues amid the sizzling summer conditions here in Korea. In this following report, our defense correspondent Chemin Jong takes a look at some of the unit's ways of beating the heat. Do take a look. An F-15K fighter jet has just finished flying and is making its way to the shower to cool off. In the sweltering hot summer, it is important to cool off the heated jets and rinse off any salt formed when flying over the sea. 
While the jets cool down, pilots have to endure an apparent temperature of over 50 degrees Celsius under their pilot suits. Fighter pilots fight head-on against the rays of the hot midsummer sun under a transparent canopy. I know that I have sweated a lot when I see my wet uniform. Airmen and airwomen also get a short breather from the scorching heat while enjoying some papingsu, Korean shaved ice dessert with red beans. But they are again quickly drenched with sweat as they load heavy missiles weighing more than 160 kilograms. We are provided with short sleeves, so I wear those. There are also portable air conditioners, so I try to work while avoiding the heat. The Air Force said it is working hard to prevent heat-related illnesses by implementing flexible flight times during heat waves at the commander's discretion. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. Up next, we share with you a story of compassion and collection by an American couple that has led to a meaningful contribution of books, paintings and pictures that offer a glimpse of Korea's broader history. Our culture correspondent Song Yoo Jin reports. For Gary and Marianne Mintier, Korea holds a special place in their hearts. I always say Udinada. We weren't born here, but it's, it's Udinada. <laughs> Back in 1969, the Mintiers came to Korea as Peace Corps volunteers and worked as English instructors for six years. During that time, they developed a keen interest in old Korean artworks. When I was in college, I took one art course, and it had a little bit of Asian art. And I liked it then. And then when we came to Korea, uh, we didn't have a lot of money at first, but uh, when I could, I would buy a certain piece of art that I'd seen in a store and my wife would buy me one for anniversaries and birthdays. Their collection grew to include a total of 150 books, paintings and calligraphic works. Among them is a painting by Song Sumyeon, a renowned painter of the late Joseon dynasty. However, this year, the Mintiers made the decision to donate all their cherished pieces to Korea including a thousand photos they took during their stay, which captured Korea's struggle to heal the scars of war. We were really fortunate to be in Korea at that time when many Koreans uh, were, had other, um, priorities. Other, other priorities, right? To, uh, and art wasn't necessarily one of them. And so I said, it's time to give them back to Korea. I mean, Korea gave us so much in, while we were here and even afterwards. It... The Overseas Korean Cultural Heritage Foundation has played a crucial role. We first learned about the Mintiers collection in 2017 through an instructor at the University of Southern California. Over the years, we built a strong sense of trust through email exchanges, which I think ultimately led to this generous donation. Marking the occasion, the Mintiers have returned to Korea their third visit after departing in 1975. The most recent was 2013. They say they're always amazed by the remarkable progress Korea has made. But one thing remains unchanged. The Korean people are still the same. They still have that that warmth, that heart, that, you know, giving that, that they had that Especially made us nature. stay when we came, right? Yeah, most Peace Corps volunteers came for two years. We stayed six, six and a half years. The photographs taken by the Mintiers are currently on display at the Busan Museum, while the artworks will be unveiled at the National Library of Korea in Seoul next April. Song Yujin, Arirang News. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world now. In Crimea, airstrikes from Ukraine on Sunday have damaged two road bridges. Ukraine has claimed responsibility for the strikes, one of which struck the Chonha road bridge that links mainland-occupied Ukraine to Crimea. A smaller bridge linking the town of Henichesk with the peninsula's northeast coast was also struck, damaging a nearby gas pipeline. No deaths or injuries have been reported and the bridges are expected to reopen soon.
The strikes come a day after a wave of Russian missile and drone attacks on Ukraine, where at least six people died, and a blood transfusion center was destroyed in Kupiansk. In Pakistan, at least 30 people have been killed and 100 injured after a train derailed on Sunday local time. The train was headed from Karachi to Havelian when it came off the tracks near Nawabsha in the southern Sindh province. It was carrying over 1,000 passengers and was reportedly traveling at normal speed. The cause of the crash is being investigated. Pakistan's railway system has a poor safety record and such accidents are not uncommon. In 2021, at least 40 people died after two trains collided in the same province. 2023 Women's World Cup favorites Team USA have been knocked out of the tournament. They were beaten 5-4 on penalties in Melbourne on Sunday, following a goalless draw with Sweden. The US dominated most of the match but couldn't find the back of the net, thanks to Sweden's keeper. The match moved on to penalties where three US players, including Megan Rapinoe, missed their spot kicks. Sweden's winning penalty by Lina Hurtek initially looked like it had been saved, but goal line technology confirmed that the ball had crossed the goal line. South Africa, meanwhile, has had its World Cup dreams ended, following a 2-0 defeat to the Netherlands in Sydney. Sweden will face Japan in the quarterfinals, while the Netherlands will face Spain. And finally, in a social media post on Sunday, Elon Musk said that a potential cage match between him and Meta owner Mark Zuckerberg will be streamed on his social media platform X, and that all of the match's proceeds would go to a charity for veterans. Zuckerberg responded by recommending that a different platform be used. The date of the proposed fight has not been set, but Zuckerberg has suggested August 26th. It's also been suggested that the mixed martial arts fight will be held in Las Vegas. Talk of the match began in June when Musk tweeted that he was up for a cage match with the Meta owner. Zuckerberg replied a day later, asking Musk to send a location of the proposed fight. Matthew Ashley, Arirang News. Good afternoon. East of Gangwon-do province has been seeing downpours since last night. It could come down at a rate of up to 200 millimeters into tomorrow with a rain advisory issued. Other than rain-affected areas, the rest of the country is sizzling in the intense heat. Western parts of the country are having a hotter afternoon with daytime high surpassing 35 degrees Celsius. Then there is a chance of passing rain in most regions, which won't help to relieve the heat but will only add that steamy heat to the air. Meanwhile, Typhoon Kanun changed its course and is now heading towards the Korean Peninsula. For now, the weather agency is forecasting that Kanun could strike the coastal region of Gyeongsangdamdo by Thursday afternoon. So from Wednesday, southern regions will start to have stormy weather. Then the typhoon could affect the whole country by mid to late this week. So please stay updated with the latest forecast and stay safe. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. And those are the headlines at this hour. We have our panel session coming up right after this break, so do stay with us. Thank you for now.